Guruve Gauda Chanjaya Radhikaya Tadare Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tada Bhaktaya Namonama Pancha Kalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Shindu Vaibhacha Patitanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namonama Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gauda Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Dhanavat Pranam devotees. So I am um, responding to a question that came in um, from a devotee who asked that in a previous lecture, I'm not sure exactly which lecture, um, they heard me mention that the word, the English word love, that the English word love was not an adequate translation of the word prem. Uh, of course, we speak often about Krishna prem, about the goal of the practice of bhakti being prem. And so, of course, the only available translation, so to speak, uh, to give some indication of that has been love. But I mentioned that my Gurudev, Nittalila Pravishtom Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Stutara Satasisamad, Shri Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and not only my Guru Parapadma, but our Shri Prabhupada and others. Uh, Vaishnavas, realized Vaishnavas, have also mentioned the inadequacy of the word love as a true translation of the word praim. And so the devotee was asking why, because is not uh, praim actually love of God, because that's how we translate it. So what uh, has been mentioned by our Guru Vargas is that Prem is actually, first of all, an absolutely transcendental reality without any tinge of material influence. And we cannot actually say the same about the common parlance that we use uh, in describing material emotions and using the word love. Because first, anything that is of spiritual content has certain qualities. One quality is that it is eternal, sat, because you know sat chit ananda. So even the very basic understanding of something that's spiritual is that it is eternal. And we do not experience the function of love within the material world as something that's eternal. Sometimes people in the sentiment will say, I will love you forever. But the reality is that we will not exist as the two individuals expressing that phrase. They will not exist eternally <laughs> as those two persons because by their karmic uh, package or their karmic influence, they will become two completely different people in the very next life. So there is no permanency of an exchange of, quote, love between conditioned situations or conditioned persons. Actually, in the Sastra, it's mentioned, kaitavam rahitam prema na prema manushloke. So the word prema is used here to describe that in the material world, kaitavam rahitam prema, what is appearing to be like prema, this love, appearing to be like prema, is actually kaitava. Kaitava means cheating. So here it's not a gross form of cheating. It's to express that the so-called love in the material world really is not imbued with a pure sentiment. And when I give the definition of praying, it'll, it will make sense. Uh, the definition that Srila Rupa Goswami Pad is given of praying, one definition, Savata Dongsa Rahitam Yarapi Dongsha Karane Yad Bhava Bandano Yuno Prema Parikirtita Savata Dongsha Rahitam Yarapi Dongsha Karane The word Dongs means to break something or to destroy something. So, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad is mentioned 
that prem is something that uh, under no circumstance can it be broken. Even if a cause was to arise, it could not be broken. So this is very interesting because in the material world, the so-called feeling of love is always contingent on causes. It needs a cause to come about. It's not axiomatic. Even sometimes the closest thing people will say to unconditional love in this world is parental affection for a child. But even in that parental affection, there is the genesis of a cause. This is my child. And the child has to even grow into the consciousness, going through the stages like Anamoya, Pranamoya, etc., to even recognize the, the nature of a relationship with that person who's given them birth. So, and then, you know, love may develop, but even we see over the course of time, even among parent and child, sometimes due to a cause, that love is broken. So it both has a cause to begin and it also could have a cause to be broken. Whereas the transcendental nature of praying, yarapi donksha karane, if there was a karan, means a cause. Api means even though there's a cause for the love to be broken, yad bhava bandhano yuno. Rather than breaking the love, it strengthens the love and brings the two people closer together. So to give an example, if Sri Krishna will do something to upset Srimati Radhika, then the love between Radha and Krishna will take on a nuance. That nuance is called man. <laughs> you understand? So man is actually a transformation of love itself. It is not a separated mentality from love or is working converse to love. It is actually a feature of an evolution in love. Hmm? So briefly let me explain that spiritual love goes through various stages and each stage with its own unique quality maintains itself while nourishing itself to grow to another stage. So first there is bhav. Bhav means when there's a descent of a slight ray of praying into the heart of a jiva. Right? This is explained in uh, Nectar of Devotion or Bhakti Rasmita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami. Sudha sattva viseshatma prem suryanksa samyabha bruchi bis chitta masranya this stage of Bhav has the quality that it's like a ray of sunshine of praying. And when it enters the heart, it expands the ruchi. Ruchi means like the particular unique taste a person has towards Sri Krishna and Srimati Radhika. It, it completely nourishes that ruchi, and by that ruchi, ruchi bis chitta masranya. Chitta means the consciousness of the conditioned soul. In their chitta is so many material impressions and sanskars. When this ray of praying called Bhavarati enters, it melts away. Huh? Chitta masranya, masranya means to melt. It melts away any alternative or false identities related to the jiva and reveals the true nature in combination with that particular unique taste one has towards God, their spiritual identity. So this is called Rati Abhav, and this is the initial stage of praying. In the material body, because of the nature of praying and the nature of the uh, transformative qualities that come with praying, the material body is not suited to, to deal with it. Therefore, in the material body, praying cannot be housed in full. So when one comes to the point of making their transition and they have come to the stage of bhav, then in the next life, wherever Sri Krishna is performing his lila within the material universes, that soul will take birth there and according to the nature of their particular rasa, will get a form that is called vastu siddhi. Vastu city means a form composed of actual spiritual elements, right? The soul already is Sat, Chit, and Ananda. But when Bhav comes, that soul's 
quality of Satchidananda will become absolutely one with the spiritual substances called Samvit, Sandini, and Aladini. Sometimes devotees think this is one and the same thing, but it's really not. Satchidananda means eternity, the principle of cognition, and a state of Ananda. In the conditioned souls, that Ananda, Jiva Goswami Pada, is written in Paramatma Sandarbha, he quotes one verse, Chit Ananda Atmaka. And he explains that Ananda here means the state of the soul is uh, the antithesis, because he quotes Dukkha Pratiyogita. And this word Pratiyogi is coming from one uh, school of thought called Nyai. And Pratiyogi means the opposite of something. So he's saying the soul in its very nature is the opposite of misery, which means there is no misery in the Atma itself. I've explained this many times, that misery is a vicarious arrangement between the individual soul and its identification with the avidya shakti and hence the material elements. So there is no actual misery in the soul itself. It comes from that connection of vicarious identification with the material energy. So it's not that the state of Ananda is exactly the same as the state of the influence of the spiritual energy called Aladini Shakti. The Aladini Shakti is a vritti of praying. <clears throat> and that function of praying evolves. It's nourished by itself and it evolves itself through various stages. So once we take birth in wherever Krishna is performing his pastimes, at that time we receive a body composed of Sandini Shakti imbued with mm, Aladini Shakti and we will have the cognitive potency of Samvit to experience this spiritual reality. Now, that praying also nourishing itself becomes sneha. Hmm? What is this verse? Aruya paramakashta a chit deepa deepana ridayam dravayam. So now it's describing the stage called sneha. Sneha means, uh, when English translation is, I don't know, affection. None of these words really capture the meaning of these transcendental spiritual terms. Right? But sneha means. When prayer has become more intensified, chit deepa deepana, a deep means like a light. So chit deepa deepana, it means that the intensity of the feeling itself illuminates itself. So understand this. So the nature of the love that has come to the position of sneha becomes so intense that the sneha itself inspires itself to further melt the heart. Ridoyam dravyatam, liquefying the heart. Dravyatam means to liquefy something, essentially. So by the intensity of the growth of that frame becoming sneha, it completely illuminates itself and further melts the heart. I'm not going into details because in Ujjali Lamani, many details about what is sneha. It has two divisions. There is Gritta Sneha and Madhu Sneha, so so many things that will lose track if I try to explain every detail here. So Sneha means this further melting of the heart. That Sneha then transforms either into Man or to Pranay. There's different sequences under which one comes before the other. But taking the term Pranay, so what does Pranay mean? Pranay is described in Ujjali Mani, Swaru, a uh, pranaya sasya a uh, visrambha kat budhi a uh, kaitito budhi. So here it's saying kaitito budhi. Those who are very learned, they understand that this stage called pranaya means pranaya sasya visrambha. It means when there's so much intimacy that the lover and the beloved no longer keep separate identity but consider themselves like one. So let me try to give an example in the material atmosphere. <laughs> if any, and there really is no comparison, but I'm just, so give us some kind of pictorial jump start. In the material world, if any young lady and young man, they will meet, 
and they are going to go on a date for the first time, then because of a lack of familiarity, a lack of intimacy in the genesis of the relationship at that point, a great deal of etiquette and respect and a fear of treading on the wrong side of things, all of that becomes the dominant feeling within the heart of the couple, the male and the female. Because this is a first date and you don't want to transgress any social etiquette. You understand? But as the relationship begins to grow, there is an organic and natural unfoldment of a kind of intimacy. And in that intimacy, there's a kind of familiarity. So for instance, on the second, third date, I'm only, I, this, I'm not speaking <laughs> from recent experiences, obviously I've been married, uh, I don't know how long now, 28, 27 years. So, but in that arrangement of the, of the growth, there comes a point in the unfoldment where you feel comfortable to hold hands. Then you may feel more comfortable to embrace. Then you may feel more comfortable to exchange a kiss or something. So in this way, gradually there's a intimacy and familiarity that's organically growing. So the position of pranaya is like this. You understand? Except that it has generated from the intensity of sneha. Then that pranai, because of intimacy, can lead to states where ahili premana gati suabhava kutila bovet. When it can become, ahi means a snake. So that feeling can take on some crookedness. And this crookedness is called man. <laughs> Because of the familiarity, then either hetu or ahetu means with a cause, without a cause, sometimes a crookedness will take place in the unfoldment and there will be a reason or not, right? Either contrived reason or an actual reason for the couple now to be separated. But the intensity of their desire to be together is still there. But circumstances, either contrived or actual, create a situation in which they are separated. This situation is called man. So you can see just from these explanations of Shri Rupa Goswami Padinujali and Mani that praying has so many functions which are not at all present or captured by the term love. If you ask in the world uh, to define love, people really will maybe give out a bunch of different emotional um, feelings, so to speak. Well, love is when you completely feel good about somebody or you, you get butterflies in your stomach or, of course, that could be indi indigestion as well. <laughs> but anyway, I'm joking here. But the point being that there is no defined uh, quality, so to speak, and therefore, some people will say, well, love can't be described. It's a feeling. You understand? But the point being that because it is not an actual spiritual substance, and because it's temporal, and because it's born or, or generated from material consciousness, it's not real enough to have a substantive definition. So please don't, don't become... Depressed, yo, know, does that mean I don't love my husband or I don't love my children? No, because there is a such thing as real love, spiritual love, there certainly has to be a reflection of that in the material world. Instead, just like everything in the material world, the nature of relationships, the nature of everything is simply a perverted reflection of what's in the absolute reality. So there is a reflective quality of spiritual true love in the material world but as I mentioned from the verse I quoted, Kaitavam Rahitam Prema, basically it's, uh, now Kaitava here, the word Kaitava in Sanskrit means cheating. But here it does not mean necessarily cheating with malice. It means it's just not substantively real because our identities in these bodies is not eternal. And therefore, because the very nature of love being spiritual, as I mentioned in the beginning, is an eternal phenomenon, we cannot truly call it love. So therefore, our Acharyas have said it's kaitava. 
You understand? Kaitaba means it's a kind of cheating because it's not substantively real. Now, I do want to make one caveat here that Shilukko Samipad in uh, Upadesh Amrita means Nectar of Instruction. He has described the Dati Pratagrinati Guya Makyati Prichiti Bhukte Bojayate Chaiva Sadvidam Priti Lakshanam. He's described that the exchanges that go on between those in whose lives Sri Krishna is the center, their exchanges are imbued with the Lakshan quality of Priti of love. So then Mukunda, how could that be? Because aren't even those who are practicing, aren't they still technically in condition life? Even though they may be at some particular level still of unfolding from condition life, because they have established the center of their affection as Sri Krishna, then from the watering of that root, the tree of their association with others who have put Krishna as a center will carry the quality of priti. Therefore, in Vaishnav Maitri, means Vaishnav friendship, there is the quality of love. And six symptoms of that quality are the Dati Pratagrinati, Guyamakiti Prachiti, etc. That means giving gifts, receiving gifts, exchanging confidences, revealing confidences, honoring prasad, giving prasad. There's very detailed meanings to these things as well. I'm not going there now. But so the quality of Prem is present in those relationships in which Sri Radha Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Hari Guru, and Vaishnava are the center. You understand? So, but as I was describing, these functions and how love elevates itself in the spiritual context is not present in the so called exchange of feelings in the material world called love. Also, the very um, quality of the eternal function of the love. I mentioned that Rupa Goswami Pada has given a definition, Savata Dongsarahitam, under no condition can it be broken. Well, you see that in the material world, people can be in love for two months, and in month three, they can hate each other. So, so, Obviously, the quality of what is exchanged in this world as feelings certainly doesn't meet that definition of Savata Dongsaraitam. Rather, extremely, it can go to the opposite polarity. You can be in love with somebody for one, two months, and then in the third month, hate could arise. And even some people will be in a relationship for 15, 20 years, and then some discord will come in which they are separated and that quote feeling is no longer there. And additionally, the so-called feeling of love is so malleable in the material world that it can go from one person to another. Oh yes, I was in love with this person for two years, but then now I'm in love with this person. <laughs> Whereas the love of God, true love, is always centered and stays centered in the absolute truth and there is no other deviation from that. Understand? In the spiritual dimension, all the love of the residents of the spiritual world is centered in Sri Krishna. Hmm? Rupa Goswami also gives a definition when the conditioned soul comes to the stage of their perfection, it is called a stai bhav. It means a permanent fixed emotion. And that stai bhav has been described. Stai bhav utrasa prokta sri Krishna vishaini rati. That this feeling, this permanent sentiment, the object, the only object of it is Sri Krishna Vishayani Rati. The Vishaya, or the object of that love, is Sri Krishna. So, of course, here, Sri means Radhika. So, it means Radha and Krishna are the focus. And, of course, the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is directly the form also of Radha and Krishna. Understand? Krishna tasting the mood of Radhika is called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, that permanent feeling or permanent mood of love does not, first of all, switch and change and so forth and so on. And mm, secondly, uh, it is never broken, as I described earlier. Once it's established, it is never broken. You understand? Only any lila or pastime will strengthen the love. You understand? And then if you will study Ujjal and the money, many high class definitions go from there. Like from Pranaya, and from man, you will come to Rav. Dukkam adikam chite, 
Shukatwena Evaru Jayate. In Rag, the nature of love is so wonderful that Dukkam Arikam Chitte, Dukkam Arikam Chitte, that what comes into the heart as a kind of suffering, due to the nature of the love of Krishna, is transformed into the greatest kind of happiness. Shirupa Shami Pad is giving that in Braj, for any chaste lady, her chastity, Lajja, her shyness, her chastity, is the most valued thing. And then just think about in the case of Draupadi, when she was being offended by Dushashan. At that time, Mm, Draupadi, with everything she had, was trying to protect herself before she simply held up her hands and said, Hey, Govinda. You understand? Why? Because mm, in Vedic culture, the chastity of any lady is mm, equated with life and death. You understand? There's nothing more painful than to even be accused of being non-chaste. What to speak of some actuality coming about like that? You understand? But Rupa Swami Pad is told, even that threat of being known, called, or identified as being unchaste, which gives the greatest pain, just on the prospect that they will meet with Sri Krishna, who of course is, this is in Parakya mood, means Paramore mood, that risk, thinking about it, thinking about when they will do, Radhika will do, Abhisar needs to go to meet Krishna, gives the greatest pleasure. And therefore, if Radhika in the daytime is at Govardhan, she may go on the hill of Govardhan, and there are many razor-sharp stones on the hill of Govardhan. And in the midday, when mm, Krishna has been tending his cows, but later, at that midday time, Krishna will make an excuse from coward boys to meet Shimati Radhika at Radha Kund. At that time, Radhika, with her most intimate sakis, may be standing on the hill of Govardhan to try to get a glimpse of whether Krishna has started the journey towards Radha Kundanath. While standing on those hot stones, very sharp, in the midday sun, Radhika feels no pain whatsoever at all. On the other hand, if mm, her mother-in-law, Jatila, will tell to Kundalata. Kundalata will come to pick up Radhika in the morning to take her to Nandagaon, the house of Krishna, to cook. Because as you know, Srimati Radhika was given a very great blessing by Duvasharishi. That for whomever she cooks, whoever takes the meals prepared by Radhika, they will live a very long and healthy and wonderful and prosperous life. <laughs> with many blessings. So one time, when Kundalata came, because Yashoda Mai, she's like a queen, considered. I was just like Kirtida, the mother of Radhika also, is they're both like royalty, so to speak, in Braj. So because Yashoda Mai is like a queen, everyone gives honor and respect to that position. But Jatila began thinking, listen, why should I allow my daughter-in-law to go to the house of this person whom we have no real relationship with, only by village connection we have relationship, why my daughter should have to cook for her son and her family? This is Jatila's thinking like this. And therefore she told to Kundalata, no, my daughter-in-law will not come today and not go any day to Nanda Bhavan to do any cooking. At that time, in the inner chambers where Radhika stays with her sakis, Radhika hearing this news, she fell into a faint. And in that faint, her bodily complexion completely changed. And her body temperature rose to a point where even the Sakis, when they began to panic, they were taking cool drops of water, putting it on a very tender flower petal, and they would try to apply it to Radhika's body. The water would completely evaporate the steam and the small flower petal would burn to ashes. Because Radhika in her deep mood of separation, high class mood of separation, I did not describe Prem up to the point of Radhika's Prem, which is called Madhanakya Mahabhav. There is nothing that exceeds that and it only exists in Srimati Radhika. Some features of that Prem are called Sudipta Mahabhav, 
means that the particular ecstatic emotions, asta satvik vikar, the transformations, they come in the highest degree with the most intensity. One sanchari bhav is called mriti. It means like dying. Like dying, not dying, but like dying. So you know when you're about to leave this world, the body temperature raises to a great fever pitch and so forth. So in the same way, in this state of ecstasy, uh, Shimati Radhika in a faint was feeling like this in the symptoms I described. So at that time, uh, when Jatila came to inquire what was wrong, the Sakis told, oh no, what has happened is that Radhika was picking any flowers and when she was picking the flowers to do the Surya Puja, because every day Radhika and her Sakis will go to the temple of Surya Dev to do worship and Jatila her mother-in-law will think this is for the welfare of our family. My son, hmm, Abhimanyu, and so forth. He will receive blessings by Radhika's faithful worship of Surya Dev. So he says, while she was picking the flowers, she was bitten by one snake. So Radhika's sakis are very expert. <laughs> and they told to Jatila, yes, yeah, she was bitten by one snake. What snake? Oh, they understood that was the snake of the deep separation from Sri Krishna. But Jatila thought she was bitten literally by a snake. And I think I will go too long if I try to hold pastime, but uh, there are many beautiful, beautiful pastimes. Chamatka, Chandrika, Shilvishna, Chakravati, Thakurpad. And he tells the whole story about um, how this Leela unfolds. Um, and Krishna himself comes disguised as one doctor and the whole Leela unfolds and Jatila's mind is changed. Understand, but this is the nature of the beauty of the highest class of love manifest in Shimati Radhika. So the point here is that mm, this kind of praying, mm, it has qualities and functions that affect the, mm, the heart in a way that the mundane quality of what we identify as love in this world can never touch. Not only that, but the essence of the exchange of love in this world is based on a mutual mm, exploitation, so to speak. I don't want to use words that sound so heavy because there's never an intention to be exploitive. But the nature is, I love you because you make me happy. And in the variety of ways that you make me happy are the causation of why I love you. And without, in the absence of that causation, then I could not say I love you. <laughs> Understand? So this is a kind of mutual exploitation. Whereas the gopi's love for Krishna, atma suke duke gopiyo nahi ko vichar. In the love that the gopis have for Krishna, there is no consideration atma suk duk. There's no consideration about how we feel. Everything is only for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. Krishna Indriya Prati Dare Prem Nam. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's described. When Krishna is the center of any desire, that is called praying. But Atma Indriya Prati, ah, hmm, Tare Bhare Kam. If we're thinking of our own self interest, that is called Kam. Kam here means self interest. Right? And Kam translated as lust, but the essence of it is self interest. Understand? So for these many reasons that I'm giving, there is not an actual comparison of the material concept of love to the transcendental description of what this praying. And of course, as you do bhajan sadhan, and even going through the prabhav of praying, because in this world, the sadhaka will experience the prabhav first. Prabhav means the influence. The influence of praying begins in shraddha. Understand? When a person comes to, by their previous bhakti impressions, or by good fortune of somehow or another, they come to the position called mati. Mati means like the, the, the position in which you can discern that the material world is not the all in all. And you begin to ask questions about spiritual reality. You understand? That stage is called mati. means when some vivek means discrimination comes. 
This material world cannot be the all in all. And Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad is the epitome of asking this question because he asked to Mahaprabhu, Ke ami, ke ne amai, jare tapatrai. Who am I and why am I suffering? Even though other people say I'm very learned because I don't know these things, I don't consider myself very learned. Mahaprabhu responds in a synopsis way, Jivera Sarupoya Krishna Nitya Das, Jivera Tatasta Shakti, Ved Abed Prakash. And so Mahaprabhu answers, Your real identity is your Das of Krishna. And any of your suffering has come because of Tatashta Swabhav, the nature of being marginal and therefore being uh, availed to being covered by the material energy. And that is the cause of suffering. Understand? So when we come to this point, at that time, uh, the rescuing element that comes in to help us turn away from the continuum of material pursuits is called Shraddha. And this Shraddha has a power because it's a influence of praying, the same praying we're talking about, it's an influence of it, it has a power, and that power is described. Shraddha Anuvai, Shraddha, hmm. Shraddha Anupayani Bharajam, Bhakti Unmukhi Chitta Vritti Vishesh. Oh, Dandavats, Dandavats, Prabhuji. <laughs> Haribo. Oh. Uh, I, I mentioning here, I don't want to break the chain of thought here, but I spoke to Bhumi Bhati Prabhu and he's reminded me that I've not been to your place in quite some time. So I'm promising that if I'm coming to New York any time in the future, I'm definitely up coming there. <laughs> All right, Hari Bol Prabhu. So, like this, Shraddha, Shraddha Anupaini Bharajam Bhakti Unmukhi Chitta Vitti Vishesh. What could not be accomplished by the individual power of any jiva is accomplished by the slight prabhav, means slight influence of prem in the form of shraddha. Because in 11th Kanto Srimad Bhagavatam, it is mentioned there, Anadi Avijya Yuktasha, I've quoted this verse so many times. Anadi Avijya Yuktasha, Purusha Shavedatmanam, Swato Na, Sambhavanti Anya, Dhyanatva Ganadomabhe. So, the jiva has been connected with the material energy from anadika, means time without any beginning. So sometimes we try to translate the word as time immemorial, time beyond when we can remember, but anadika is anadika, <laughs> one way or another. Right? So, svatona sambhavanti, to effect getting out of that material connection is not possible through our own energy. Anya requires another. Who is that other person? Ganatua Ganadobavet. So Ganatua means who is a sadhu, who's realized absolute truth. And Ganada, who's merciful, and therefore will reveal the absolute truth to you. That is the only way to get out of the material influence. So, Vishnu Chakrabati Thakapad is mentioned, Ado Shraddha. When that Mati stage arises, and the Jiva wants to know what else is there besides this material world, it's at that time, by the mercy of Bhagavan, Brahmanda Brahmati Kon Bhagavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasad Hai Pai Bhakti Latavij, that a sadhu comes into the purview of that particular jiva. Then by the influence of that sadhu, Shraddha arises. And then Bhakti Unmukhi Chitta Vritti Bisesh. Then one turns their, their interest in life towards spiritual pursuit. And then under the further guidance of that sadhu, in their Sangha. Sangha here means Samyakrute Nanugamana. Means to be following that sadhu with humility continuously. Because this is the meaning of the word Anu here. Hmm? Anugatya. Samyakrute Anugatya. Or Anugamana. Means to continuously follow a sadhu with hmm, hmm, humility. Because Anu here also means Anutva means feeling oneself to be very insignificant. So that means if you're trying to follow the sadhu, but you're very proud, and you have a very challenging disposition, it'll be very difficult to follow in earnest by heart the sadhu. When you're following the sadhu, this is called doing sadhu shanga. When you are doing sadhu shanga, at that time, the teaching of the sadhu is given this is called bhajana kriya. I mentioned these things many times before. So he is giving siksha in bhajan, how to perform 
the mood of service towards God. The Kriya Shakti of Bhagavan subsidizes your understanding and therefore through your senses gives a subsidy of those sensual activities like worshipping the deity, cooking, cleaning, chanting, anything you're doing with your senses which normally would not be able to have the power to mm, serve Bhagavan are now subsidized by the Kriya Shakti of Bhagavan. That's why the third stage is called Bhajana Kriya. And now with that influence of the spiritual energy, the Bhajana Kriya, the Anartas can be removed. That stage is called Anartha Nivritti. When they're removed, Nishchalaya, uh, Yasha Iti Nishta, then the vacillation of the consciousness of the Jiva, his Chitta or her Chitta, will now be dominated by spiritual influence and therefore the vacillation that takes place while you're still being challenged by your material impressions from previous lives and the current life begin to wane and the dominance of the spiritual influence takes place in the chitta, making it steady. In that way, it becomes eligible to taste the nature of the spiritual energy. At a stage, is called ruchi. You understand? So now your bhajan practice Ataha Ruchi Bhajan Vishai. So the first stage of Ruchi is that it becomes tasteful to chant, especially to hear Harikata, to do Seva to Hari Guru Bhajan, all becomes very tasteful. Right? That is a symptom that spiritual influence is taking over the chitta. Then gradually, when that matures, it becomes an attachment that you cannot give up. It is called Asakti. And when the stage of Asakti only awaits for the descent of the mercy of Bhagavan in the form of the verse I quoted earlier. Uh, uh, mm. Sattva Prem Sri Bhak, this verse. And when that Sudha Sattva, that spiritual energy, Swarup Shakti descends onto the Chitta, at that time, mm, then Avya Bhuya Manovrito uh, Rajayate Sarupatam mm, Swayam Prakash Rupopi Basamana Prakashava. At that time, Rupa Goswami is writing in uh, Bhakti Rasamina Sindhu that when it descends onto the chitta, it takes over the functions of the chitta, and now the spiritual energy itself has become one with the atma, and now operates exclusively on a spiritual paradigm. And it just stays in that mode until in Vastu City, when you take birth, wherever Krishna is performing his lila, and you receive a body which is just suitable for that. That's described in the first canto, sixth chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, in Narda Vyasambad, when Narda Muni speaking to Vyasadeva, he told Vyasadeva, When I became perfect, Prayujamani Mahi Tom Sudim Bhagavatim Tanum. Uh uh, Prabhupada Karma Nirvano Anya Patat Panchabodhika. When I became completely purified, at that time, I saw that my all Prabhupada Karmas, means all my karmic portfolio, uh, was gone away. And the body of five elements also fell away with it. And at that time, I received a body that was completely suitable. Sudim Bhagavatim Tanum. Tanum means body. Sud body. Pure body. Fit to serve Bhagavan. And Prayuchamane. Prayuchamane is translated as awarded here because Jiva Goswami Pad I read in Kramsam Dharma means that without the mercy of Bhagavan, it cannot happen. But another meaning of Prayuj is oneness, Tadiya. Right? Pra yuj. Yuj like yog means connected. Pra means like completely. So to be absolutely completely connected to the spiritual identity and form that you have, it's called pra yuj. So in this way, I hope I've been able to describe in many different angles of vision why the term love is not really an adequate translation for praying, but because it's the only available English word, uh, we use it. But we should try to understand the implications of praying according to what I have quoted from Guru Sadhu and Sastra here. Um, there's a question here. Oh, Ramji, you're asking. Uh, oh, vacillating, vacillating. Not uh, the word here. Vacillating means. Vacillating or oscillating means going back and forth when the consciousness is undergoing changes, right, between the material energy and the spiritual energy. And anybody who's in the process of unfolding in bhakti knows 
that there are various stages of bhakti and in these different stages of your evolution, you go through different stages of like Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur has described 27 things. Six stages of unsteady bhakti. That means when you first come to bhakti, then there's something called Utsumayi. Utsumayi means in the first week that you come to bhakti, you may be very enthusiastic. It's something new. It's finally the answer to many of your questions. So you have a kind of enthusiasm. But Utsumayi means that enthusiasm is kind of a false enthusiasm because it's unsustainable until you actually begin to understand the actual nature of bhakti. Right now it's just the, the newness and the relief from the sort of anxiety that came from not knowing about bhakti. A newfound enthusiasm has come. I'm practicing bhakti. So that first initial phase is called utsumai. And then that goes to other stages like Vyudavi Kalpa, mm, uh, Tarangarangini, so I mean six different stages. You understand? And then you have to deal with four kinds of four nathas, five kinds of subtle influence like Loi, Vic, Shape, or Pratipati, etc. So I'm not giving class here on uh, Madhurja Kandamini, but if you read Madhurja Kandamini, all these things are there. You understand? So while we're going through those things, the Chitta is actually vacillating back and forth. That's the actual meaning of Yudha Vikalpa, right? Vacillating back and forth between material thoughts and spiritual thoughts. So when you come to the stage of Nishta, the dominance of the spiritual energy that has been gleaned from sudden bhajan life and the mercy of Guru, right? It, it solidifies, clarifies, and pacifies the chitta. So there's less influence of the material energy. And therefore, a predominance of the spiritual energy that's coming through Harikata, through your chanting of Harinam, through your seva to Hari Guru and Vaishnavas becomes dominant in the chitta. And it gives rise to a wonderful taste in all of those things. That stage is called Ruchi. All right, my uh, devotees, all right, devotees, uh, please give me your blessings and your mercy uh, to go on serving Hari Guru and Vaishnava. Uh, today also is the, is it the Tirubhav Titi? And maybe the Tirubhav Titi means disappearance day. I'll have to look again. Of Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srila Goswami Maharaj, who is a very prominent um, disciple of Srila Bhakti Sanat Sarasati Thakur and was a very dear God brother of our Srila Prabhupada. You can read in so many histories how he was very dear to our Srila Prabhupada. And uh, there's a kind of unique relationship because our Srila Prabhupada uh, loved Srila Shuddha Maharaj like Shiksha Guru and very dear friend. And um, our Param Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Pratam Kesha Goswami Maharaj, he received his sannyas from Srila Bhakti Rakshak Shira Maharaj, and our Srila Prabhupada received sannyas from Srila Bhakti Pratam Kesha Goswami Maharaj. <laughs> so there's very unique connections here. And so we also want to honor this day and pray for the causeless mercy of Srila Bhakti Rakshak Shira Goswami Maharaj. He's written many books translated in, or written in English because his English was very fluent. And uh, very wonderful books like Sri Guru and His Grace, Guardians of Devotion, and The Golden Volcano. So he's written many, many helpful books for those who are practicing on the path of bhakti. And there are also many lectures over the course of years that he gave to follow the order of our Srila Prabhupada to help uh, with Srila Prabhupada's disciples in their continued growth. I spoke the other day um, that Dao Srila Prabhupada uh, manifested his lila for 11 or 12 years. And even if you were with Srila Prabhupada from day one to his samadhi lila, that was 11 or 12 years at the most. And uh, we can see now in our 50th year, 40th year of practice, you know, how, how serious time it takes to develop some understanding genuinely in bhakti. So after 10 or 11 years, of course, I cannot speak to everybody because bhakti samskars are different in everyone. But in general, after 11 or 12 years, there may not have been such great depth of understanding. So Al Srila Prabhupada therefore gave order that 
uh, especially two persons, he pointed out. One was, of course, his own uh, dear friend, and like Shikshu Guru, Shula Bhakti Rakshak Shida Goswami Maharaj. And then during the course of his Samadhi Lila, he held the hand of my Guru Parapadma, Shula Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and asked also that you should help my disciples. So I have very many tapes and everything else of the direct experience of that happening, that many devotees had gone to inquire from Srila Shuddha Maharaj and of course from my Srila Gurudev uh, to understand deeper concepts in bhakti. And uh, neither Srila Shuddha Maharaj nor my Guru Parapadma had interest to uh, gain, gain anything from that, simply to follow the order of their very dear friend and uh, in my Guru Maharaj's case, my Guru Maharaj considered Srila Prabhupada his Shiksha Guru, just as Srila Prabhupada considered Srila Bhakti Rakshak Shri Goswami Maharaj his Shiksha Guru, and his very dear friend Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshe Goswami Maharaj and his Sinyas Guru. So like this, there was no other motive except among them to carry out the order that was given by Srila Prabhupada before his Samadhi Lila and during his Samadhi Lila. Understand? So, all right, my Dandavat Pranam. Vanchakal Patruvias Chakri Pashinduvevacha Patitanam Pavanevio Vaishnavi Bion Mona Maha Jai Radhe Radhe.